God bless you. I'm Apostle Barry Glover. I welcome you to this faith instruction. Let us pray. Father, we come to you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we enter your gates with, with thanksgiving. We thank you. Thank you for being, for blessing us to be here. Thank you for life, health, strength. Thank you for family. Thank you for eternal life. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for your protecting hand. Thank you for prospering us, richly giving us all things to enjoy. Lord, we thank you for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Lord, we thank you for saving, healing, and delivering. Thank you for your presence and word today, Lord. Thank you for revelation from the word today, Lord. We praise you for being God. And we thank you that you, we know that you're God and besides you there's no other God. We thank you for being our God and our Father. And we just thank you, Lord, for the name of Jesus. The only name given whereby men must be saved. The name of Jesus. Thank you for saving. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. The message is entitled, The Lifestyle of Faith. The lifestyle of faith. Living by faith is a lifestyle for all Christians. Living by faith is a lifestyle for all Christians. If you hear someone say that they are Christian but they don't live by faith, uh, then their Christianity can be uh, questioned. Because the Word of God says that all Christians live by faith. Christian folks are defined as the just. They are defined as the righteous. They are defined as the upright. Hallelujah. They are defined as the children of God. And the children of God, all of his children, live by faith. Hallelujah. There is no other way for God's children to live. God himself abides by faith. He lives by faith. Hallelujah. Praise God. Living by faith is a lifestyle for all Christians. We conduct ourselves habitually and continually by the operation of our faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Now the word walk means to conduct uh, yourself in a specific manner. Uh, it, it's a way of living when it refers to walk. So uh, we walk by faith means we conduct ourselves according to uh, the operation of faith as it concerns all matters of existence, as it concerns all matters of life, praise the Lord. We walk by faith and not by sight. In other words, uh, what we naturally see, if it's not what God said, well then even though it's a fact, we know it's temporary. And we know what God said, hallelujah, shall change facts. It will change its conditions, situations, and circumstances. Hallelujah. We know that, that faith will, will, will remove a mountain and cast it into a sea. We know that faith will uproot trees and, and, and cause them to be planted into the sea. So, so it doesn't matter to us how things naturally look. Hallelujah. Because we know we shall change what we see, what we see with our natural vision by the operation of faith. Hallelujah. And the operation of faith is whatever God said, we believe it. Whatever God said in his word, we believe it. We accept it as truth in the face of, of opposing uh, facts. In the face of natural things that appear contrary to what God's word says. We say that God's word is true and that's what we see. And that's what we say. Praise the Lord. Came out of my mouth saying well, that's what we see. But in, in, in way, we do see what God's word is saying. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. You know, I, I just love this message. God created me to bring this message. He created me to live by faith. He created me to teach faith. This is what I do. I'm comfortable in this setting. I'm, I'm always comfortable about speaking about faith because that's what he told me to preach. He told me, go teach faith. He taught me how to live by faith. Hallelujah. And he told me to go teach others to live by faith. He told me that faith pleases him. He said without faith, a person is wasting their time if they're trying to please him. Because he said it's impossible. There's no way that God can be pleased when a person is not operating by faith. Hallelujah. So 
you know, I feel good today. Just, just because of this message. There are many reasons I feel good. I feel good because God lives in me, you know. I feel good because I got um, eternal life. There are many reasons why I feel good. God didn't touch my physical body. But I'm saying I, this message, it, it causes me to feel good in my soul. The message is the lifestyle of faith. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 3 verse 11 says, For the just, that's the Christian folk, that includes Baptist folk, Methodist, it, it, it includes Presbyterian, it, the people of the Church of God, people of the Church of God in Christ, people of the Church of Jesus. Hallelujah. It, it, when it says, uh, the just shall live by faith, it's talking about all Christian folk. God is not coming back for denominations. He's coming back for Christians. I believe it says in the book of Acts they were first called Christians at Antioch. They didn't say they were first called Baptists. So, Apostle, you said something wrong with being baptized. No, the Bible says be baptized. I, I, I agree with that. It is a correct doctrine. But God is not coming back for Methodists. Well, who is he coming back for, Apostle? He's coming, about, he's coming back for those folk living by faith. He's coming back for Christian folk. And all Christian folk live by faith. Uh, Galatians 3.11 For the just shall live by faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 one of my favorite uh, uh, verses in the Bible. Hallelujah. Because God's entire word is, 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 is uh, all good to me. All of the word is, 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 I could say, my favorite word. But 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 said, We having the same spirit of faith. Hallelujah. You know what? That makes me feel good. So it doesn't matter. They say, well, you know, the great apostle is... Apostle uh, Glover, oh, I'm Apostle too. They say, well, they say, the great Apostle will come in and he will now release his faith. Barry Glover, what do you think? I think that's great because his faith ain't, you know, ain't no different from mine. So what, Apostle? We have the same spirit of faith. Hallelujah. You can be six years old and have the same faith that your pastor has. We have the same spirit of faith. You can be 20 years old and you still, if you're a Christian, and you got the God of faith in you. You got the same spirit of faith. That's what I like about this. Anyone can go out and move a mountain. And when I'm talking about a mountain, yeah, I'm talking about dirt. I'm talking about a literal mountain. But I got news for you. That same faith will move cancer. The faith that will move a mountain can remove a headache. The same faith that will remove a mountain can, can, remove, uh, it can remove disease out of your body. And it does. That same faith will raise a dead man and have him back up alive. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have the same spirit of faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 informs us that we all have the God of faith living in us. That's great news. Good, good news. Now I'm going to define some terms for you, even though I know you already know, because you're very intelligent people. I'm going to define lifestyle. Lifestyle is a way of life or style of living that reflects the attitudes and values of an individual or group. It's, it, I'm going to say it again. Lifestyle is a way of life or style of living that reflects the attitudes and values of an individual or group. Let me give you an example of a lifestyle of living. Like I say, I live by faith. Somebody comes and says, Well, Apostle, I believe we all going to be the physical economy going down. We all going to be in a poor house and, and probably all kind of bad accidents going to happen to us before then. And I tell you what, our children will be destroyed. We just don't know what, what we're going to do, but we might make it to heaven. What do you say, Apostle? I say, friend, what you're saying is not according to faith. First of all, uh, I live by faith, and God is my shield, my protection. That shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. Hallelujah. God say, touch not my anointed, I'm his anointed. Every Christian is God's anointed one. And do my prophet no harm. Do my apostle no harm. No harm shall come to me, nor my household. And God calls, and whatsoever I do prospers. The economy ain't got nothing to do with my prosperity. The economy of the United States, or what they say is happening in Greece. They say the economy of Greece can affect the economy of the United States. They say if, if Greece don't get no help, the United States economy might collapse. Boss, what do you say? It has nothing to do with, with uh, my economy. What do you say, Apostle? 
It ain't got nothing to do with my economy, and it ain't got nothing to do with the economy of the Christians. First of all, we in the kingdom of God. We always prosper. Hallelujah. We always trapped in Christ. God increases us more and more. If we make a movie, we know it's, it's, it's a prosperous movie. We know great sums of money shall come from that movie. If we write a book, friend, it's the best show. We know, because whatever we do, it prospers. Hallelujah. Now, that's my answer, and that's... Uh, a way of life for me in Christmas. And, 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 and I gave you an example. And the example I gave you is it, it's, it's a style of living that reflects the attitudes and values of me and Christians. That's right. We, we don't live by what we see. See, I'm possible. Oh, we're looking so bad. I might cover my eyes. Possible, you better cover your eyes. We don't even see how bad we're looking out there. I say, all is well, friend. So, what did you say, Apostle? Is something wrong with your natural vision, Apostle? No, it's 2020. Well, can't you see? Look at all this devastation. What are we going to do, Apostle? We shall build. Say what? We shall build. We shall replenish. Hallelujah. We shall cause new cities to flourish by the hand of the Lord. Apostle, what, what, what eyes are you looking with? <laughs> the eyes of faith, my friend. The lifestyle of faith. Now let me de define the word live for you. It means to conduct one's life in a particular manner. We conduct our life in a manner of faith. Hallelujah. All we want to know is what, what thus said the Lord. All I want to know is, is, is what did God say about the matter. See, it don't matter what other folks say. Apostle, the doctor said some things to you. I, that's true, and I said some things to the doctors. Because <laughs> all I did was go in the book. I just want to know what God said. Because if I find out what God said about it, that settles the matter. That settles the matter. And, and, for, and, and as it concerned me, that settles that, that situation. That's the conclusion. Of, I, you just close the book on the conclusion. So, Apostle, is it all? God has spoken. And that's what I'm saying. The lifestyle of faith. Hallelujah. I enjoy living this way. This is the only way to live. I think this way, sleep this way, awake. I walk about from day to day. Uh, conducted myself in lifestyle of faith. Hallelujah. It's automatic to me. I think faith. I speak faith. Hallelujah. I speak the word of God. Hallelujah. All I want to know is what God said. See, I know how things are turning out with the children. How, Apostle? All is well for them. They prosper while they're here on earth and everything. And they belong to the Lord. And all of them say, he's going to talk about my house. Now, every Christian should be saying that. And I got scripture for this. You know, because it says in the book of Acts, the uh, man asked uh, Silas and Paul, say, Sir, what must I do to be saved? And he said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and conjunction, thy house. The whole, all the children will save. Hallelujah. You read that account? Acts chapter 16. I, I believe it, it's in the uh, beginning at verse. Uh, I'm going to go over here and make sure I do it, since I brought it up the correct verse. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, page over. Uh, Acts chapter 16, beginning at verse 30. And if you read on down further, you see that this whole house will say, I got a promise from God. I got a promise in Isaiah saying that all my children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of my children. You know what peace means? Wholeness. No good thing missing, nothing broken. Salvation is included in that. Health, strength, prosperity, intelligence, wisdom, knowledge. I can tell you how it's going to turn out. Hallelujah. I can tell you how the fight going to turn out even before it stops. Because I got the book. The book of faith. This is how I live. The lifestyle of faith. This is the way we live. If God said it, so be it. Amen. I say amen. You know people be preaching sometimes, you know, and, and I love our preachers. You know I'm preaching myself. Sometimes preachers say, well, the apples was gathered in the, and uh, they was put in the basket. And the people say, Amen, Amen, brother, preach, Amen. And you be saying, well, what does they say Amen to? Some apples put in a basket. I be saying, what does that got to do with the word? What does that got to do with faith? What does that got, you know? But, but when I hear what God said, when the preacher tells me what God said, says in, in, in Psalms uh, 91, he said, and he shall call upon me, Psalm 91, 15, and I shall answer him. You call upon God, He will answer you. I like that. That's definite. You absolute. You call Him, He answer. Say, I'll be with Him in trouble. That's what God said. 
and said, uh, when God was your trouble, friend, the trouble don't mean that. <laughs> trouble can't hurt you when God was you. <laughs> the trouble can't bring you down. The enemy can't defeat you when God is with you. Say, I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him. God said he will deliver you. He will set you free. And then he said, uh, I will honor him. Hallelujah. And uh, I will honor him. Praise God. See, when I find out what God said about it, that's the conclusion of the matter. I don't care what the newspapers say. I don't care what they say on TV. My friend, my, and, 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 you know, my friend could call me on the phone. Say, hey, you know, the apostle, you know, I got some, uh, you know, that matter we were talking about, and, and, and you said what the Lord said in Psalm 115, but I got something to tell you about how it looked naturally. I said, don't call me talking like that. So don't call my house like that. Now, you, you know, they've been around me a long time, my friend. You know, they love that. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that, because God has already spoken. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to move on. Uh, let me define the word style for you. It means the way in which something is said. Oh, that's only one way to say something. See, there's a lot of talking going on. You know, you see folk on the phone, they be riding in their car, and they talking on the phone, which they should be. They be riding in their car, walking up down the street, you know. You know, people sometimes don't even have time to speak to folk now. Because they're on their phone, they see somebody, they know they're waving them, you know. Or they text them. You know, you see them somewhere and they're steady texting. Steady texting. And God's not pleased with that. Not pleased with all that texting. So why not, Apostle? They're not texting faith. If they was texting faith, God would be well, please. He'd be looking, he'd be smiling to them. Look what they say. Saying, I'm a great God, I'm a great healer, I'm a great provider. Saying that they, you know, wealth and riches are in their house. Saying that all of the children are protected and all of that. Saying the neighborhood is flourishing. Saying I'm blessing, blessing the whole state of Arkansas, blessing in other states. I'm moving into California. And God is smiling. He's pleased with that. But folks texting about, are you going to the movies? Well, well, well let's, let's go to the pool hall. <laughs> <laughs> hi, hi, did you talk to Cousin Mary? <laughs> what about Brother John? Did you see what suit the picture had on Sunday? No, 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 that's too loud of a cover for him. Did you see what the first lady had on? Man, that dress is a little too short for her. God is not pleased with stuff like that. Like I say, people's on the computer. You got something against the computer apostle, no? And, and they go into different places, you know, that you, you know, they, 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 they move to different places, different sites on, 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 over the internet, and they're not going to any sites of faith. <clears throat> the, life, the lifestyle of faith is a message. People are doing a lot of stuff, but they left faith out of it. You know, you can go, I, I have been to some churches, and, I, and I'm quite sure every Christian has experienced it. Well, where they was not teaching faith. So what you said, Apostle? <laughs> I've been to church in the past up there, you know, and he, he, he was, I mean, he could make them sound with his voices, sound like he was singing. I mean, yeah, it does something to your flesh, you know what I mean? Just does something to your flesh, you know, and, and, and everything, you know, and it seemed like he was singing, moaning, and groaning, groaning and, and you know what I mean, doing all, just, it, the different sounds he made with his voice. And uh, because he was saying we don't, he didn't know, we don't know what God will do. And we might make it, we might not make it. And you got to just suffer anyway and be beat down and live a defeated life. But you came from the wrong side of the tracks anyway. But you're too tall, too short. You're a black man, not educated enough, got too much education. But, but maybe it might be better than heaven if, if you make it. And the folks said, what a, what, a, what a message to the pastor brought. And it's excited that flesh. And that's what it did. It was a flesh message. It was not a faith message. I believe it said that the flesh is enmity to God. Can't please God. The flesh hates God. All that old fleshly stuff. Ain't no faith in it. No faith. I can't wait to go back next summer and see what he's talking about. Somebody said, well, what is he talking about this? You know, what is he just talking about this son? Well, well, I think he had something to do with the archer. You know, and how maybe we ought to, you know, just like the folk go out and pick up, you know, the, out of the archer and gather different things. And 
Maybe we ought to think about getting an extra job. I'm going to move on. Uh, <clears throat> style is defined as the way in which something is said. Hallelujah. Like, like, I, I can't get past it. I ain't going to finish this message at this, you know, uh, this particular time. It'll have to be more than a part one. That would be a part two, because uh, I'm defining the word style, the, the way in which something is said. I can't get beyond this texting thing here. Here you go, folk texting. In church. Now, now, now they texting. And like I say, if God is not pleased, because there ain't no faith in what they text. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with texting. God wants us to text, but he wants us to text. Faith messages. We don't have to stay attention. Well, so as the, so the church over, I'm thinking, I hope they don't hold us too long. You know, after all, he, they, you know, he ain't talking about too much anyway. But anyway, uh, I, I, I'll meet you at the church. Text. Uh, the word way mean, I mean, the word style mean the way in which something is said. Say, Brother Apostle, what do you think about uh, the Lord keeping the city? Oh, well, you know, it's, it's tornado season. You say, what season is it? Because you personally pray. You say, what season? What, what, excuse me again. What did you say, Brother Apostle? What season did you say? didn't say God's protection, protection season. He didn't say that. That's what the Bible said. We, God didn't say he'll protect us. Uh, two days out of a month. This is not in this Bible. Let's read the Bible. You need, you're responsible for reading this Bible for yourself. Blind folk following blind leaders. They both are following in the ditch. Jesus said, leave them alone. Better read this Bible for yourself. I'm talking about Tommy and Sam. What is it? It's hurricane season. Her hurricane season? They look at that phone. I said, yeah, you turn the TV on, honey. You know, it's, it's, it's April, it's, it, it, it's May, it's tornado season. You know, that's what the, some of the preachers say, the Christians, you know. And then, that's not all. That's not all. It's like, well, bro, boss, tell me you. Uh, have you taken your flu shot yet? Flu shot? find the word style. The way in which something is said. Now the definition, it, it goes on. There's more to this definition, but I just hadn't got past said yet. You know, it, uh, and style is the way in which something is said. That should only be one way that Christians say something. Oh, apostle. This way, the word's way, whatever God said. God didn't say it. There's tornado season. Have you, I know you read this Bible. Have you read in your where God said uh, a certain uh, time of years is tornado season, hurricane season, flu season, pneumonia season, cold season? Oh, they got their season. They even got the author arthritis season. Arthritis time. When it get cold. See, Apostle, look at that time. My back, my back. I said, what, 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 friend? I'm talking, and what, aren't you the bishop? Yeah, I'm the bishop of the church. I'm bishop of the 40 churches. You know what, it's cold now. My back hurt me. You know, my God, the writers. The message is the lifestyle of faith. And I said, I'm defining the word style. The way in which something is said. We should only say what God said. You know, God gave us a mouth to speak. In Proverbs 16 1 says the answer of the tongue, you know, the answer from your mouth, is from the Lord. When you're not saying what God said, you're not answering from the Lord. So Apostle, if you if I'm not giving the answer from God's spirit, I'm not talking from God's person, whose person am I talking from? I'm gonna help you, friend. There's only one other person you could be speaking by, and he is the thief. 
the uh -oh, killer, the destroyer. A lot of people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Calling things upon themselves. Well, I don't know what we're going to do. We should, we should have a storm shelter built. But we ain't got one. We ain't got no basement. Not a toilet. It's on its way. It's going to get us all. That's not fair. God wasn't mentioned nowhere in there. In there. I'm going to find this word. The, uh, the definition of style is the way in which something is said, done. The way something is done. Expressed or performed. You think I can move on now? I'm going I'm, I'm to move on. I'm, I'm going to move on now. Uh, and the word way, I'm going to find that is a course of conduct or action, a manner of doing something, a usual or habitual manner or mode of being, living or acting, an individual or personal manner of behaving, acting or doing. Uh, even though there are times when natural facts contradict, appear different than or in opposition to the truth of God's word, yet we accept God's word as truth, and we speak that true word. It doesn't matter how things look, because the word of God is what matters. The word of God is what, when you believe it, accept it as true, and you speak it, that's what you'll see. And you look at the situation, it's gone. So I'm not a bad situation, Apostle. Didn't you hear the word of faith I spoke? Yeah, I heard that, and then just disappeared. That's the way we live, friend. I'm going to make the statement again. Even though there are times when natural facts contradict, appear different than, or in operation, or in opposition, rather, to the truth of God's word, yet we have accepted God's word as truth. And we speak that truth. This is what, this is the answer of our tongue. This is what thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Praise be to God. God is a spirit. And we are spirits. God is the spirit of faith. I like that. The God of all faith lives inside of every Christian. You know some folks say, I wish I had more faith. How much God you got in you? What did you say, Apostle? I said, how much God you got, got in you? Apostle, I believe all, all good, all good person is inside of me. Do you think God left part of himself outside of you? No, no, I'm, I'm born of God's spirit. God is in that. Everything that's in God is, he brought it inside me. Okay. Well, then you got God's faith. You just need to use it. Hallelujah. Develop what you got. You got muscles, friend, but if you don't use your muscles, they won't be developing. You can have a little bitty muscles. <laughs> you see somebody with muscles this big, you can say, look at this. Man, muscle. How come it's all like that? And your, your arm be about like that. Your arm be about like that. It's because that man is using his muscles. Hallelujah. People. I'm going to help you today. Hallelujah. The God of all faith lives inside of every Christian. John chapter 4, verse 24 says, God is a spirit. Of course, we know that man is a spirit. We know we're a spirit. First Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verse 23 says, I pray God your whole, I believe, spirit, soul, and body be, be preserved blameless. Hallelujah. Man is a spirit. He got a soul. He lives in a physical body. You are a spirit. And you have a physical body and a soul. Jesus and the Father are one God. I like that. John chapter 10, but that's the truth. John chapter 10, verse 30 says, I and the Father are one. Jesus said that he and the Father was one, and the folk wanted to kill him. Because he, by making that statement, he was really saying that, that he was God. That the Father and him was the same person. That's what that one means. They, they grabbed stone, they wanted to, you know. He walked through the midst of it. We conduct ourselves in this life by the faith of Jesus, the Son of God. And there's no way of faith. We conduct ourselves in this life by the faith of Jesus, the Son of God. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, Apostle Paul is speaking. He said, in the life which I now live in the flesh, 
I live by the faith of the Son of God. And every Christian lives by the faith of the Son of God. And remember what the Son of God said. He said, I and the Father are one. You live by the faith of God. When, you, when you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. When you've seen Jesus, you've seen God. When you've seen Jesus, you've seen the God of all faith. And, and the God of all faith is inside of you. Such a great revelation. Hallelujah. Use your faith, friend. You got it. God and his word are one. And since God is the God of faith, then we know that his word is the word of faith. God's word is the faith word, the word of faith. Here's the proof of that. Uh, additional proof, rather. In Romans chapter 10, verse 8, uh, it says, The word is nigh thee. Here it is. Well, now, here it is. Near me. Uh, uh, it says, in my mouth. That, that's why I keep God's word. Say, give me an example, apostle. I always travel in Christ. That's, that's in the word. The victory, here's the victory that overcomes the word, even our faith. My faith will come the world and everything in the world. Uh, I live by faith. I'm the head, not the tail. The lender, not the borrower. I'm above only, not beneath. Whatsoever I do prosper. See, that word's in my mind. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Joshua 1.8. I keep God's word in my mouth. Because this, this is who I am. I am who God says that. God said I'm the protected one. Well, this is where, this is possible. The storms are headed our way. I say, uh, God will protect the city. And I know my house is protected. I'm always protected. It's not possible that they got some kind of killer virus in the atmosphere. If this is headed my way. It, it won't harm us, friend. I said it won't harm me. See, a possible that you know evil befall me. Psalm 91. Neither shall any plague come down my dwelling. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Let me give you an example of a book of the law that has departed out of a person's mouth. Oh, it's flu season. It's going to get us all. Oh, they got these bad viruses out here. It's going to kill us all. Oh, what we going to do? We going down. The economy going down. Oh, my children all my. I, I believe, I believe they going to all be. I, I, they they, they going to all be in jail. I know my wife, she going to leave me. She's a young woman anyway. I believe she kept looking over at that young man, that young apostle. But I love Jesus and I'm, and I'm the head deacon of the church. I'm the head deacon. That's the book of the law that departed out of that man's mouth. God said, this book of the law should not depart out of your mouth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The word is nigh thee even in thy mouth. That's why we're talking about the lifestyle of faith. Those people that live by faith. Faith is a lifestyle for the people. That keep the word of God in their mouth. They keep that word in their mouth. And in their heart. See, if you keep it in your mouth, it's going to automatically be in your heart. That's because you keep saying it and it's deposited in your heart. That's more word in your heart. You keep putting the word in your heart. You keep putting the word in your heart. By you, keep, you keep saying it. You keep hearing what you're saying. It keep going into your heart. and you. That's where you live. That's where you stay strong and healthy. Hallelujah. That's how you come out the hospital if you're in there as a patient. I was in the hospital and the doctor said, oh. <laughs> and, then, and then he come in with his report to me. And it, it wasn't nothing nice, you know. But I had that word in my mouth. You know, God, God, God with me, you know. I had, I had a word in my mouth and in my heart, you know. And I kept saying that God had delivered me. Apostle, did you leave out the hospital? You're watching me on video now, friend. Gotta help some of these people. We love them. We love you. Yes, it brought me out to the hospital. It healed me. When I was paralyzed, the word of God that I kept in my mouth, it brought me out. Out of the hospital. I'm no longer paralyzed. I'm standing upright. I couldn't even stand upright. I couldn't even sit down. I couldn't even walk. <laughs> Look at what I'm doing now. When my appendix ruptured inside me, the word of God healed me. They said, they said, Two weeks, I, was, I had a high fever. I said, we don't know what's causing me. I said, we can't even close it. They had, did uh, operate it and, you know, had a big hole in my stomach. I said, we can't close it up. It's just too much infection. And they, look at me, friend. Look at me, friend. The word of God healed me. Then I was in a hospital. So, Paul, so you've been in that hospital a few times. God's been there with me every time I went. They said, well, you got a blocked artery. You know, your heart. I 
to Lord. Got my attention. So Lord, this is our heart here. Lord brought me out to the hospital. You know what I mean? Heal my blood circulation. I was back at the hospital. I said, Apostle, you man. Now I went there and prayed for folk too and seeing God just heal people. I practiced that. That was a lifestyle. Going, going to the nursing homes, teaching the gospel, and going to the hospital, laying hands on the sick and seeing God heal. Seeing folk get saved. But however, back to when I went to the hospital again as a patient, they said, You got several blockages. And I was hooked on up, you know, stuff like that. My arms, you know, different stuff, you know, they had had me hooked up. Heart monitors and all that. Lord brought me out. And when I went back, Apostle, did you pray? God has healed me. God has healed me. Hallelujah. But I kept the word in my mouth, what I'm trying to say. And Romans 10 8 said, The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and thy heart. That is the word of faith. I knew we were back to faith. Here it is. The word of faith. Hallelujah. It is the word of faith which we preach. See, if you hear the preacher talking about, well, in Alabama, and I can't, I can't sound like those preachers that, you know, they do all the things they want. And I don't want to sound like that either because I'm going to bring some knowledge, some wisdom, and, and bring some understanding. I'm bringing some power. What they say ain't going to do nothing but, um, you know, excite your flesh. But, they, but I'm trying to give an illustration of a preacher talking about Alabama and, and the red clay hills of Georgia. And how when he was a little boy and how he had to walk 20 miles to town and it was hot. And he didn't have no water, but he had this, he stopped at his neighbor's house. And, and his neighbor sometime would, would let him get some cool water out of the well. And the cool water, we need cool water. We all need water. See y'all next time. He said, what a powerful man. What a powerful message. Of course, he'd be making other sounds too. Sound like he's singing something. He said, what? Look at that. Hey, that man got a beautiful voice. And God did give a man a beautiful voice. But the only thing is, there was no faith in his voice. Can't help nobody. Folk go outside and they're about to wait on They're about to. They're just being beat down. All of that big. Be down, don't know what to do, they ain't got no, being a destroyed family, ch children, daughters, you know, being impregnated, you know. I'm talking about the teenage daughters. Boys dropping out of school and stuff, and people, wives, leaving their husbands and stuff like that, and losing their jobs, and more and more poverty already, and poverty and everything, but, and the preacher keeps, well, when I was in Alabama, I was a little boy. I had to walk 20 Miles to make it to town. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no faith in the message. And you see crowds of people going there. You see, you see crowds of people going there. Listen, uh, uh, yeah, that's not the way I sat. A lot of people left, I, I sat. You got more room in the church. You got more room in the church places. chapter 2 verse 15 very important scripture because some people you say well pastor well I heard a preacher he missing a scripture or two and sometimes he give us a scripture we don't know what it means and he don't explain it to us but he do give us a scripture so that's what I'm talking about that's what I'm going to talk about now 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse in verse 15 very important sometimes the preacher will mention a scripture but he he, he doesn't write it back See, you better get you some faith. You know you need some faith. We all got to have some faith. We can't do anything without faith. See you next time.
be saying. He said that every Sunday. You know, you need something, you got to get something. We all got to have something because we ain't got it. We can never, we'll never be successful. But he never told us where we can get it, how we can use it. But we know we need it. You know what's been going on. So, be able to tell you something.
strong black man. Second Timothy two fifteen study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, this word can be rightly divided. God said, but don't you know? And I shouldn't have to tell you this, but I know some folk I need to tell. You. It can be wrongly divided too. The preacher can say, well now, I'm giving you an example. Well now, God really want everybody to have a blessing today, and I. I want you to take all the money you got with you now and, and, and then uh, all the money you got in your bank accounts. I want you to go get all of these to your land. First time you give me that money. And go get the money that you, know, you left at home. So, and sign it over to me today. Put it in my name. Because God said. Now some people will lie on God. Because God said about three days and three hours a super blessing is coming around your way. So give me all your money. Now that's wrongly dividing the word. And then let me give you another example of the preacher wrongly dividing the word. It's all right for me to have a wife and be involved sexually with these fine women here. Because the Lord knows he made me a man. The Bible says I made a man. I'm a man. And the, and the folk, silly women are led captive. He does say about me, and he is a man, you know. Nice looking man, too. <laughs> you know? And rightly, uh, this word needs to be rightly divided. The word of God that we have in our mouth and in our heart, it is the word of faith. The word of faith is the word of the spirit. The word of faith is the spirit of life. The word of faith is a living spirit being, and he is God. The Word and God are one. The Word is Spirit, the living and active Spirit, God. I'm going to st stop here. I'm going to stop here. The message is the lifestyle of faith is the message. I'll see you in part two of this message.